What's up, y'all? It's me. It's your boy, Asmongold, and today I wanted to show you guys a new dungeon that's going to be coming out in patch 7.2, the Cathedral of Eternal Night. Now, I had a chance to do this last night on a PTR, and it was a complete shit show. It took forever, which is like two hours, which for today's standards is a pretty long time for a dungeon. And on top of that, I was playing with people I couldn't even communicate with because they're Russians, speaking Russian. And despite all that, Despite all of that, all of the frustration and annoyances, I actually had a good time doing this dungeon, and I had fun. So I'm going to be showing you guys some of the trash pulls, all the boss fights, and just the general theme of the instance, and kind of what to expect. Now, I want you guys to also, I want to make one note here, is that I want you guys to just ignore my own play, okay? I just transferred this character over, and I was literally spellbooking some abilities halfway through this instance, okay? So, ignore that, but let's go ahead and get into it. Now, one thing that you're going to notice immediately in this dungeon is that, look at the fucking trash mobs. The trash mobs are doing like five different abilities, they're jumping over, putting circles around, charging around, devastating swiping, putting shields up. Oh my god, it's like... These guys have more mechanics than vanilla bosses. It's crazy. So that's the main thing that I've noticed about this dungeon is that they're, the trash mobs are, are very, very complex. And if you really want to be able to optimize this dungeon in Mythic Plus, which obviously it's going to have whenever it comes out, you're going to have to know exactly how to do these uh, these trash mechanics and that might seem silly, but that's what you're going to have to do in this dungeon. I think that there are more trash mechanics in this dungeon than there have been in any of the other, well, any of the dungeons in the entire game, honestly, but even in the Legion dungeons. Now, another thing that you're going to notice here is that there are going to be mini bosses inside here. Now, this Dolzak guy, basically, uh, he was like fighting the guys that you can see behind me to the right there. And then after he kind of like breaks through, he kind of like runs up and fights you. I don't know if like you're supposed to kind of like go through this gauntlet really fast so you would ignore him or what but I did really feel like that was kind of cool the way that happened and at this point um, I'll be honest I'm an idiot and I didn't know that we were scaled down to item level 830 so I thought I was like my 910 item level warrior and I was just gonna clear all this shit out no big deal and it wouldn't have mattered how how good my item level was because I just got knocked off the edge and I died from fall damage so that was kind of embarrassing, but luckily uh, they weren't able to speak English, so they couldn't tell me I was a moron. So um, whenever you got knocked down there, uh, you saw some of the other guys down there. You, those you're not supposed to kill them. They have like millions and like, like billions of health or something like that. So you're not supposed to kill them. But again, uh, you know, I got overconfident and I, I got fucking knocked off the edge, okay? So... You really have to know what you're doing with these different uh, these different trash packs. The uh, Hell Hellblaze Temptress is there, I believe. I don't know if it's those, but it's one of the uh, the Succubi. Um, is it Succubi or Succubus? I don't know, like what the plural or um, you know singular uh, word is there. Uh, she casts the alluring uh, gaze or whatever. Uh, obviously, it mind controls you, so you want to interrupt that. I'm pretty sure you can stun them out of that, so you don't have to um, just stand there getting MC'd. But this group, um, uh, they, they, it left a little bit to be desired, but I think that that's kind of the way that they felt about me too because of this uh, spell booking so let's go ahead and look at the first boss here it's basically a fell tree okay um and there are these different ads up here the uh, the fellborn botanists are pretty much they can heal all of the other mobs around them so you need to make sure you interrupt them also those uh, lashers as you can see right there they do like this grip and they bring somebody into them and i don't know what's going to happen whenever you actually do get hit by them i'm assuming they're probably going to like explode or something like that and so that also um, makes a pretty interesting mechanic because also some things they pull you in and then other things you need to move out of it for other uh, AOE reasons. So again, it makes doing this trash very, uh, very dynamic. So the first boss here is the, uh, I'm not going to try and pronounce it, it's the tree, okay? And I don't really know what entirely, what these ads, which ads are actually supposed to spawn here because some of the ads from the... Uh, from just the trash packs were just running in here and we had to deal with them at the same time. So I can't really say if these lashers were actually supposed to fight them or not, but the boss was, was fairly interesting. There was nothing that this boss did. This was kind of like the exception to the rule. This boss was basically, it was a tree, okay? And it did tree things and then it died. All right, it wasn't really too big of a deal. Nothing else really happened. Uh, there were poison pools that you had to move out of, and he did the smash there. It knocks you up in the air, and then you go back down, and then 
that, that wow okay killed the tree great i got 845 item oh boy so this is probably the uh the, the least exciting boss uh, of all of them but again we don't really know uh, how exactly the mechanics are supposed to function because of course this is ptr and you can expect pretty much all of this stuff to change so um, the second place, or actually, no, I'm not going to get up to that one yet. I forgot. Um, I wanted to show you guys this clip here just because I thought it was really cool whenever I was standing on the uh, the stairway. Basically, you're making your way up the temple, okay, and you're going to be fighting uh, Mephistoroth or something like that. I don't know, like, really how to pronounce his name. He's one of the Nazarene Dreadlords, and um, you fight him in, like, the, there's, like, a like an introduction scene thing where you um uh basically you kind of like establish the foothold in the the broken shore and whenever you do that the last boss there is mephistroth and i don't know how to say his name okay it's the dread lord and you basically just fight him to half health and he disappears so you're kind of like uh finishing it whenever you uh fight him in here so these hellblaze imps these are very similar to uh in Auchindun, in the dungeon in um uh, warlords of draenor the imps that you would fight right before azrakel which is the uh the demon boss Basically, uh, you know, they did really nothing, but they did a very long cast, did a lot of damage. So as a prop warrior, um, I could have used Spell Reflect, but it um, was not on my bar. So uh, Spell Reflect is really good there, and also you can just LOS them. They're very easy to deal with, but at the same time, uh, if you do them wrong, obviously it's very, very punishing. This next room is just a complete clusterfuck, okay? So you've got the uh, the imps running around, you've got this other mini-boss that basically, uh, I mean, he just causes all kinds of trouble on top of that. He does a thing where, like, the fell beam, obviously you just move out of it, that's easy. Uh, you turn away for blinding glare. Um, that's real simple. If you don't, it does a ton of damage and it disorients you and basically it will probably kill you if you're not a tank. So you have to make sure you're turning away for that. So that's like one of those rooms that like if you do it wrong, you're just pretty much going to wipe. Now the second boss here, um, no matter how you do him, you're probably going to wipe because he's bugged out. So Thrashbite the Scornful, what he does, he, he he's like, I, I like this boss, right? Because he doesn't do a lot, but what he does do you better fucking watch out for her. So he does scornful gaze. Okay, he did that uh, circle. You just move out of it. That's real simple. It's scornful gaze. I didn't know if this is something you were supposed to soak. It wasn't. As you can see, the whole raid's dead. Your whole group's dead. You're not supposed to soak it. So I'm going to show you guys. That was our first pull on him. All right, so I'm going to show you guys how it's actually supposed to work. Now, obviously, uh, anybody that's played the game for any real uh, length of time would probably assume that he puts a gaze on you, and so you're supposed to run out of line of sight, right? Because obviously you're not supposed to intercept it as a tank, like I thought it was going to work, like in Black or Cold. So you get behind a bookshelf and destroys the books. Um, I, I didn't really, he doesn't really look like a guy that reads anyway. So anyway, uh, after that, he goes and he pretty much just spins around the outside of the room. If you get hit by that, you're dead. Uh, even as a tank, it almost one shots you. And uh, then he just repeats those three abilities. He almost doesn't even do any melee attacks. Uh, you pretty much, like, we were having so much trouble with this, I was thinking that I might just uh, respect the DPS because I was taking, like, no damage as a tank. He meleeed me, like, once or twice. So as soon as he would come back after his spin, uh, he would just recast that um, that pulverized thing. I, I feel like these mechanics are um, a little bit overtuned and they're not really behaving in the way that they should. This boss seemed really cool. I liked him a lot. He reminded me of Butcher and Highmall, where he only did a few abilities, but if you did those abilities wrong, you were going to have a very, very bad day. So I liked that a lot about that uh, that boss. And going up here, another thing that you're going to notice in this dungeon, or well, I noticed definitely, and you guys are going to see a little bit of is that this dungeon really does emphasize pulling it correctly now for many other dungeons especially the ones in war of draenor if you do bad pulls the bad pulls that you make don't really matter unless you're doing them with the fixes that kind of hurt you on top of that right so if you're pulling a bunch of stuff and it's necrotic obviously that's going to be bad but outside of that if you just do a bad pull it doesn't really matter but in here it really does because different mobs patrol back and forth and if you aggro all of them together uh, you're going to die and I think I might show that in this clip but either way if I don't show it just know that I died very quickly now this is another mini boss here and this mini boss I think also does not function properly but basically you have to uh, she has like these necrotic spiderlings that put a dot on you and my healer I don't know if druids can dispel this dot or not but I know that this druid that I have did not dispel it so I had to go around kiting the spiderlings while aggroing the new ones while actually damaging her while the raid or the group I'm just going to kind of refer to it as the raid that's what I'm used to, uh, damage down her. Um, if we kind of killed the spiderlings and reset her, the spiderlings respond. So this was an interesting little, um, uh, I, I guess like little 
challenge as a tank, you know, to try and tank her and also deal with these spiderlings that were still moving fast with the slow. Uh, very interesting to do. I don't really know how somebody who wasn't like, who's not like a monk or a warrior would be able to handle that though. It was a challenge for me and it was entertaining to do and fun to do as a tank, right? It was almost like kind of trying to reset stacks on the Crotic on, on live servers now. So I felt like that was really interesting, but I don't really know if they're going to keep it uh, that difficult for whenever the, um, the the instance actually comes out. Now, after you kill her, you're going to meet up with Maev and Illid and Stormrage, two people that I would not uh, expect to be on the same team. But here they are, and basically they're trying to reclaim the Aegis of Agrimar, uh, which is the shield, right, that uh, I think God King Skullbald wanted, and uh, it's a thing, and I, I don't really know why they want it. I didn't really pay much attention but apparently it's a thing, and it does a thing, and uh, it's really important to kill the Legion, right? So we're trying to get that back from Mesferoth, and it, it's right there, okay? It's right there. So then Khadgar comes up, he's like, yo, we, we, you know, bad day, okay? He basically says bad day, and we have to get the uh, the Aegis back. And so Maev and Illidan are going to kind of hold off the demons while you come into, uh, I guess, like, go into here. And I really like this, okay? I really like this. It's like you're stepping into, like, the Colosseum, right? And, and for whatever reason, I thought it was cool. You got the fire coming up, the fell fire coming up. For whatever reason, I, I just thought this was a really, really cool, um, really cool room. And it just felt like, it, it felt like you were going into the last boss's room, okay? And for whatever reason, I just thought that was really cool. This guy isn't the last boss, though. So basically what's happening here is Domtrax is the third boss, and he's going to do a number of different abilities, and uh, after you uh, wipe to him once, he doesn't do any of them. So that made the second time after we wiped very easy, but you guys will see pretty much what's going on. So he summons fell portals, you have to go and kill the fell portals, they obviously summon adds, and you pretty much just have to pick up the adds and burn him down once he gets low enough health. And also if you don't kill the portals, he will spawn more portals so you get overwhelmed. Uh, basically, if you don't kill the adds, uh, they will overwhelm you. And also, uh, oh, chaotic energy. So whenever you cast that, you have to go inside the shield there, okay? So you go inside the shield, which the druid did right, which is like the only thing that he did right, the whole instance. And so you go inside the shield in the middle whenever he cast that. And uh, that I thought was very interesting because it kind of, it was improving and kind of building on an existing mechanic that people knew how to do from Halls of Valor. And it was even created through the Aegis of Agrimar. So I thought that was really cool. If everybody just stands in it all the time, time i believe it the the circle gets smaller and then it just doesn't really do anything so it kind of makes it important to move in and out of the circle which makes it a little bit more dynamic and a little bit more fun but uh we did wipe on him because we didn't kill the ads so uh we basically just went back in there and nothing happened now after that you're able to actually claim the aegis and then Mephis Roth actually comes out here and you have to fight him. Now, the last boss in here, uh, despite the, besides the one ability that he does do that is really fucking cool, uh, the rest of it is, is not really that amazing. He casts something called Dar uh, Dark Solitude, I believe, and um, Carrion Swarm is like a tank ability, you just face him away, and he just puts green stuff on the ground. It's real simple. Dark Solitude, you're just not supposed to stack up, and whenever he reaches 100 energy, he goes into this other phase where, um, I remember playing games like this back, uh, back whenever I was like a little, little kid, and I'm going to show you guys what I mean, and it's one of those games where like, uh, well, I'm, I'm just going to explain it to you guys whenever it happens, okay? So he casts Shadow Fate, right? And this took us a couple of times to figure out. So Illidan comes down, and you use the shield to shield Illidan while Illidan kind of brings Mephistoroth, uh, Mephistoroth, I don't know how to say his name again, uh, brings him out of uh, out of stealth. And what you're doing here is you're absorbing, because he summons these illusions, and you're absorbing the little balls that the illusions shoot at Illidan. So if the balls actually hit Illidan, it does damage to him, and it makes the phase last longer. So what you have to do here is turn around and, you know, kind of plan out which orb you're going to uh, you're gonna kill, and also have your range killing the other adds at the same time, so it doesn't just build up. Now you can't, as far as I know, you can't just have everybody stand inside the shield. The shield, I think, only reduces damage uh, from those uh, orbs, because if one hits one, it's like 2 million damage, right? So it's kind of a big deal, and basically, I just have range kill the, uh, the, uh, uh, the illusions so they don't kind of overwhelm you with balls. And uh, then Mephis Roth comes back, the Dreadlord comes back, and you just repeat the phase. It, it's pretty simple, but at the same time, I remember playing games like on like Game Boy or like a, like a Windows 95 computer 
that functioned the exact same way. So whenever this happened, I was like, oh my God, I've trained for this my whole life. So I, I, f I felt pretty good there uh, doing it uh, just because for one, I did it right. And, and two, it just felt really cool because it was like a, you know, a new iteration and something that we haven't really seen before in the game, a, a new type of mechanic that kind of builds on an old uh, existing game mechanic that's been in other games and other types of stuff like that. So I, I felt like that was probably the coolest part of this dungeon was doing that one thing and is probably the most interesting thing, uh, at least in my opinion. So after you kill him, obviously the Aegis is yours to control. Like, I don't know. I thought that we, I thought we got this. Actually, I thought we got this in Halls of, uh, of Valor. So apparently, like, somebody lost it. I, I really have no idea. But it seemed like uh, I was a little bit confused. And so basically then Aegwyn comes out. Uh, Aegwyn, uh, just so you guys know, is the uh, guardian of Trisfall. Uh, she's uh, Medivh's mother. I don't know if I'm saying her name right. Uh, but she's Medivh's mother, and she banished an avatar of Sargeras, um... Uh, from uh, from Azeroth, right? So she actually is pretty, um, I, I guess, like, if you know about basically the Burning Legion and everything like that, and you know the story, uh, she does have a lot to do with it. But anyway, guys, that's basically the dungeon. I had a really good time doing it, I, despite all the annoyances that came in. And so go ahead and let me know how you guys feel. Uh, again, uh, pretty good, pretty good dungeon. Very, uh, in a way, even though obviously it's just, in a way, the same old stuff, I felt like it was kind of new, and maybe it's because it was new, but the mechanics felt new as well. So let me know Let me know what you guys think. Um, I, I would rate the dungeon probably a solid 8 or a 9 out of 10. So um, obviously you guys haven't done it, so it would be hard to really rate it, and even I haven't done it on actual live servers, so I can't really say, but from what I see, probably 8 or 9. Anyway guys, that's pretty much all I got. So thank you for watching, and like, comment, and subscribe.